We're on lesson 11-2, so let's begin. Like always, we did the guys for practice in class, so we're heading straight to our independent practice. Use the data in the table to complete the line plot. Well, here, remember, I was going to say, what do my dots equal? Well, here, my dots are bracelet lengths. I can see that's the name of the chart as well, so I know that they are matching. But, hmm, remember, this has my length down here. So what are these actually showing me? Well, it's actually showing me my bracelets. So a dot is equal to a bracelet. So here we have an eight inch. Here we have an eight and a half inch. And remember, I always want to keep the dots in like that same line all the way across so I can tell how high or low they are comparatively. Here's another eight. Here's a seven and a half. Here's a six and a half. Here's another eight. Here's a seven and a half, here's a six and a half, and here's one more eight. What is the length of the longest bracelet? Well, my longest is that eight and a half. So I'm gonna put longest is eight and a half, and that unit is inches. What's my shortest? Well, my shortest is that six and a half inches. Shortest being that smallest number. Okay, that's it, so let's head to our next page. Define outlier. Give an example using the line plot below. So remember, an outlier, oops, I have to put back on writing. An outlier is a data point that is far away from the other data. And what's my example here? Well, this one right there is my example. And that is 65, 66, 67. 67 is an outlier. And the reason why is notice how far away it is from all of my other dots. Number seven, Alyssa made a pink and white stripe blanket for her bed. There are seven pink stripes and six white stripes. Each stripe is eight inches long. How wide is Alyssa's blanket? Well, we have how many stripes? Let's check. My stripes are seven pink plus six white. So total I have 13 stripes. Now, what I have is I have 13 groups because those are my stripes. And how big is each group? Well, each group is eight inches long. So I have 13 times eight, which when I regroup, I get 104. So how long is it? It's 104 inches. Number eight, use the table at the right. Trisha's swim coach recorded her swim times each day last meet, uh, last week. Make a line plot of Trisha's time. So here I have a line plot. And it says be sure to include a title and labels for the values in the plot. Well here my label down here is going to be my time because those are the numbers I'm working with. And I see I go from 50 all the way to 72. So I'm going to do 50 and they count by 5. So 55, 60. 65, 70, 75. Now you'll notice this isn't really my time because that is not what goes at the bottom. What goes at the bottom, remember, is my units. So what I have here is this is seconds because I'm counting in seconds. And my top part is going to be my label, which is time. And time for what? Time for swimming. So I'm going to put swim time. And remember, I need to say, what does each dot equal? Each dot equals a day. So let's check. Monday, she swam 55. Tuesday, she swam 57. Wednesday, she swam 51. Thursday, she must have been sick or something because she swam 72. And then Friday, she swam 51 again. So we have two dots about that 51. If you made a line plot of Trisha's times using zero, and five minutes is the boundaries. Would the outlier be more or less obvious that the boundaries of the line plus were 50 and 75? So we're asking, if instead of using the t numbers that we used right here, what if we went from zero minutes to five minutes? Would it be as obvious? The answer is no, it would not be as obvious.
And why is that? Well, the reason why is because my data was scattered in seconds. So my biggest range was 25. But now my biggest range would be 5 minutes, which is the same as 300 seconds. So I'm going to put the range of data would be spread out. by 300 seconds instead of what instead of 25 seconds so that means all these dots are actually going to appear closer together because there's more numbers that I'd be looking at okay number 10 Brianna is making bracelets for her friends and family members the bracelets have the following links, 6, 6, and 3 fourths, and so on. Use the data set to complete the line plot. Draw the dots and write the scale values. Well, let's find my lowest one. My lowest one is 5. And now my highest one is what? My highest one is 6 and 3 fourths. So let's check to make sure that's going to work. I see I'm counting by force because I see a force in all of them. Let me pause this really fast. So now, since we're counting by a force, let's see what we have. So we would have five. Oops. Let me get this back going. We would have five and a fourth. Five and two fourths. Three fourths. Six. Six and a fourth. Six and two fourths. Six and three fourths. And seven holes. So now let's plot our dots. So we have a six. We have a six and three fourths. We have a six and one fourth. We have a five and three fourths. We have a five. We have another six, so another dot on top of it. We have a six and two fourths. We have another six and one fourth. We have another six. And we have a five and three fourths. So we've used the data to complete the line plot, draw the dots, which we did, and write the scale values. So my scale is what? So scale is. What are we counting by? Well, to get from one to the next, I'm counting by a fourth. So my scale value is one fourth of an inch. All right, that's it.